this video is to go over the spinal cord and the sympathetic trunk. I actually like this model because it shows the spinal nerves coming off and it shows the different rami and the sympathetic trunk. And let's you relate it to the actual spinal cord. Similar to other videos, you just grab, okay, hot links. There's three of them. This is the cross section of the spinal cord. And then we have one show up there, one show up back there. And I am going to give you the zoomed in version of this. So, let us. So, I want to start at the top of the spinal cord right here. If you remember, this is that. And because it's a smaller version of this model, I didn't really focus on it when I was making the video. But we have the spinal cord. We have the posterior horns with the cell bodies of integration neurons, the anterior horn and the lateral horn with cell bodies of motor neurons. And those cell bodies have axons going out the anterior root, and we have axons from unipolar neurons going in the posterior root. And again, these would be rootlets. This would be the root. These would be rootlets. This would be the root of our posterior root ganglia right there. So that is our spinal cord. We have white matter. We have gray matter, three horns. And you have sensory neurons going into the back and motor neurons coming out of the front and these are all axons of those neurons. So that's what you could sort of see at the top there. So here is my posterior horn, there's my anterior horn, and we're not going to worry about it that much on this model. Now you can see the rootlets. Here are all the rootlets. There are all the rootlets and if you actually look these rootlets are coming down. So even though the spinal nerve is coming out here Pretty sure this would be a thoracic, either low thoracic or L1. You actually have them leaving the spinal cord higher up. So here are more rootlets, and they're going to form a root that's going to come out somewhere down here. So that's one nice thing that shows. This model also shows the mental layers. The pia mater is not on here. This is actually the arachnoid mater. This is the dura mater. And the reason I know that is there's a space between the dura mater and the actual spinal vertebrae. And that space is filled with this adipose tissue right here with a bunch of blood vessels. So adipose tissue, dura mater, arachnoid mater, pia mater is not on here. So the real reason I like this is it actually shows what happens when the nerve vessels leave. So again, we have roots. We have posterior roots, we have anterior roots, and they're going to leave in this spinal nerve. So there's my spinal nerve. So again, anterior rootlets, anterior root, spinal nerve. Posterior rootlets, posterior root, spinal nerve. So here's the spinal nerve coming out. And the spinal nerves are coming out right here in the intervertebral foramen. And on this one, you can actually see the anterior root and the posterior root. If we go down a little, here's the anterior root, here's the posterior root. It's forming the spinal nerve. We see it on the other side, anterior root, posterior root, forming the spinal nerve. Now, the spinal nerve does not last unbranched very long. So we're going to look at this top one here. Here's the spinal nerve coming out, and then it branches. We have one branch going to the posterior one branch that goes to the anterior, one branch to the posterior, one branch to the anterior. This really is to the anterior, trust me on that one. So these are called rami. This is the posterior rami, and it is going to innervate muscles of the back, take sensory information from the back. This is the anterior rami. So this would be the anterior rami, and it's really exciting. It is going to form all the plexuses, the cervical plexus, the lumbar plexus, the brachial plexus, and the sacral plexus. It is going to actually go around the body, to the front and to the sides, and it actually spawns the rami going to this strange structure right there. So again, we have a posterior root, I mean an anterior root, a posterior root, they are going to merge here, form a spinal nerve. It splits to the posterior rami, the anterior ramus, 
And we have these two rami coming off. Now, these are communicating rami. It is technically rami communicants, the communicating rami. And they go to these swellings of cell bodies outside the central nervous system. And that is a ganglion. So remember, we have the posterior root ganglia. That's actually a posterior root ganglia right there. Well, we have off of the anterior rami, com rami communicant, as taking sympathetic signals to and from this sympathetic ganglia. So it's taking autonomic nervous system information. Now, what can happen here is it is going to diverge at a second, the second axon for a sympathetic chain. That signal can either go back on the communicating rami and out the same level. It can go up to a different level. It can go down to a different level. Or some of them actually go there, come back out, and they go someplace else. So that is our spinal cord model. Again, we have a spinal nerve that splits the posterior rami and the anterior rami. We have this communicating rami coming off, joining the sympathetic trunk ganglia. So these are sympathetic ganglia, and they're actually connected by this structure going up and down called the sympathetic trunk. So sympathetic ganglia, sympathetic trunk. And that's because the signals can go in the communicating rami, just go down here, come out here. So that is our spine cross-section video with the ANS. Thank you. I actually realized I forgot to show you the labeled picture. So here's the anterior rami, here's the communicating rami, sympathetic trunk, labeled the posterior rami up here. Here's another view. You can see the posterior root ganglia there. So we have a posterior root list coming, posterior root. So,